So hello everyone and welcome to this next lecture. So in the previous lecture, we had introduced the concept of magnetomotive force or MMF, which we say is the number of turns of the coil multiplied by the current through the coil. So this is the driving force for a magnetic flux through a magnetic circuit. Now, in this lecture, let us start talking about a coil on bound on a core. And let's start talking about the flux in the core. So this circuit or rather this image is basically consisting of a coil which is wound on a rectangular core right so this is a very simplistic representation i doubt if there are any real cores like this because this is probably a very bad core for reasons which i can talk about later but usually such a core it consists of well one possible material could be laminated iron right again details will come much later so we have the coil which is wound here on one leg. This is a rectangle. The current is flowing in this direction. So the current I is flowing into the coil in this terminal and is flowing out in this terminal. So as we've already seen, when you have a current flowing through, one phase becomes a north pole, the other phase becomes the south pole. So the current, when the current flows in the phase in the anti-clockwise or counterclockwise direction, that phase becomes north pole, north pole and flux leaves the coil from that phase. So you see this is that phase. I mean you have to sort of look into this coil from this direction. So when you look into this coil from this direction, you will see that the current in this phase is flowing in the counterclockwise direction, which means this becomes the north pole and magnetic flux leaves the coil from this phase. Similarly, this other phase will become the south pole and flux enters the coil from this phase. Now, since we have a core, the flux does not just complete the path from all directions as it did when the coil was just wound in air, right? which is what is happening in the previous case. Now, however, the flux flows through the magnetic path through this core. The reason is, and this we'll talk about soon, the reason is iron is a good medium for magnetic field or rather magnetic flux to flow as opposed to air. So which is why the flux prefers to stay in this iron core, right? So this is, this direction shows the direction of the flow of magnetic field in this core. This core forms the magnetic path, right? Now, as I said before, a real magnetic circuit will be much more complicated than this. If you want to wind an inductor, this is not how you would do it. You would like to distribute the windings. You would like to do all kinds of things. You might also want to have a slightly circular core to avoid fringe effects. But as I said, those are advanced concepts and we can ease into that as time goes on. This is just to get started. So let us ignore all those advanced concepts for now. And let's just assume that this is an inductor which we can work with. Now, the dotted line that we see here is the mean length of the flux path. The reason is because the flux you see flows in this rectangular shape, rectangular path rather. And therefore, it is quite obvious that the flux flowing in the outer edges will be longer, will have a longer path than the flux flowing in the inner edges. So therefore, this dotted line indicates the mean length of the flux path. Now, let us call this C. The reason I'm calling it C is because to differentiate it with respect to L, this L is the length of the coil, right? So we have a coil which is wound over length L and let's say that this coil has N turns. I've shown only four here because I actually drew it myself. I can't draw, I can't draw more, but assume that it has several turns, N turns and wound over a length L and the length of the magnetic path is C or rather the mean length of the magnetic path is C. So, now the inductor as I said just to recap, the inductor has a length L, this is actually the letter L, but the flux is flowing through a path of length C, right? So this is important. In the case of an air, of a coil wound in air, flux path was also L. The reason is because once the flux leaves the coil, it completes the circuit from all directions. Here it does not complete the circuit from all directions. There is a constrained path. It's like a set of pipes. 
it's like water flowing through pipes it flows through the pipe it just can't flow anywhere at once right so the current through the inductor coil is producing a magnetic flux that is flowing through the core now the current is the driving force while the core through though it offers a medium the core still opposes the flow of flux right see the flux is flowing through the core the core is like a medium it's like a it's like a pipe for the water to flow through but even though it offers a medium this core will still offer some opposition to the flow of flux right now this opposition to the flow of flux is called reluctance right and it's you see it's very similar to the word resistance which is the opposition to the flow of current through a conductor right this is the opposition to flux through a medium right now the reluctance offered by a medium depends on various things it depends on the nature of the magnet of the medium material it depends on the length of the path and it depends on the cross sectional area of the path right so it depends on a lot of things exactly the same way that resistance does resistance depends upon the material it depends upon the length of the conductor and it also depends upon the cross sectional area of the conductor right a bigger conductor will have lower resistance than a narrow conductor and similarly a longer conductor will have more resistance than a shorter conductor in exactly the same way with the reluctance a wider cross sectional area will allow more flux to flow through it and therefore the reluctance will be lower a longer flux path will result in more reluctance to the flow of flux through it right and there are some magnet some mediums which are which allow flux to flow through it more easily as opposed to others for example we already seen iron allows flux to pass through it fairly easily air does not right so now this property of a magnetic material of property of a material that allows flux to flow through it this is called as magnetic permeability and it is denoted usually by the symbol mu right now the reference level for permeability is the permeability of air of free space right now air is considered to be a poor medium for magnetic flux right it's considered to be a poor medium because air does not allow a lot of magnetic field to flow through it, which is why if you see even though we have we are sitting at home we are surrounded by wires all around us these wires don't actually become magnetic they don't start attracting metals the reason is because the magnetic field produced by these wires is so weak because it flows through the air right as opposed to iron which is a good conductor for good medium for magnetic field so the permeability of air is usually denoted by the letter mu zero or mu naught how you wish to say it right so it has a subscript zero the value is 4 pi into 10 raised to minus 7 henry per meter that is the unit of permeability now magnetic materials like iron and other metals usually have much larger values of permeability than that of air so if air is 4 pi into 10 raised to minus 7 the permeability of iron is going to be much larger than that of air we'll talk about this next which is why when you talk about the permeability of magnetic materials you express it with respect to the permeability of air by this ratio which is called mu r so mu r here this is this new term is the relative permeability of a magnetic material right so this is just a pure number because mu has the same def- same dimension as mu not which is entropy per meter which means i am expressing every permeability with respect to that of air right so for example the permeability of iron the relative permeability of iron is 1000 right so mu r for air is 1000 what that means is flux passes through iron 1000 times more easily than it passes through air right that's what it means iron allows 1000 times more flux to flow through it than air would allow right so the 
the reluctance now that we talked about reluctance or by or rather permeability we can talk about reluctance the reluctance of any medium is defined with respect to the permeability and the dimensions so the reluctance is directly proportional to the length of the magnetic path we've already seen that we've already talked about it and it is inversely proportional to the cross sectional area also we saw it wider is the cross sectional area more flux will flow through lower is the reluctance and of course permeability is an indication of how much a particular medium will allow flux to flow through it so therefore the greater is the permeability the lower is the reluctance so reluctance is inversely proportional to the permeability of a medium so we have this equation r is equal to l by mu into a so as you can see it's very very the the correlation between reluctance and resistance is very strong the reluctance of a magnetic medium to the flow of flux is exactly the way the the resistance of a of a conductor will oppose the flow of current through it right there is a very strong analogy between reluctance and resistance right? and we will use this in the next few lectures when we talk about magnetic circuits So, going further, the flux, we've already talked about magnetomotor force or MMF. The flux through any medium is the ratio of the magnetomotor force MMF and the reluctance of that medium. Right? This is just the same way as current is the ratio of voltage and resistance. And therefore, we get this equation. It is just simple substitution. MMF we know is turns into current and we already saw R is equal to L divided by mu A. So we get this equation. Now as you can see the above equation needs the length of the medium through which the flux is flowing and it also needs the cross sectional area and of course there is also the permeability which is the property of the magnetic material. So what that means is this is the general definition of flux. What happens to R core? R core, we have a current I flowing through the coil of number of turns n. And we have already said that the mean length of the magnetic path, which is this dotted line, is C. Right? So, which means for this particular case of the inductor which we've considered, the flux is equal to Ni multiplied by mu into a assume that this core we have not shown it here right because it's a two dimensional image but the cross sectional area of this core is a is equal to ni into mu a divided by c because remember length is it is the length of the flux path so it is the it is this length of the flux path in our case is c okay this is the flux that is flowing through this and flowing in the core of this inductor right so this is how you would calculate the flux through any core with respect to a coil which is wound on it and that is carrying a current right so again this is a little simplistic there are many other effects which we have ignored we have flux is not always uniform when it flows through a medium there are fringe effects there are crowding effects there is there are places where the flux is not even there is even leak, there are things like leakage. There is all kinds of effects which we have not considered. Those are advanced topics. We won't consider that that much. This is a course on power electronics and how we can model magnetic circuits for power electronics. So we are only going to introduce some basics of magnetic magnetism for that purpose. But largely the application is power electronics. So with this, I'm going to end this lecture. If you have any doubts, Please do post in the Q&A forum and I'll be happy to help you out. In the next lecture, we will start talking about the actual relationship between flux or rather we can we'll start discussing what is called as the BH equation. So, see you soon in the next lecture. Thank you so much and goodbye for now.